I turn now to criminal defense attorney and civil rights attorney Mark O'Mara. Decade ago, he successfully defended George Zimmerman against second degree murder charges in the killing of Trayvon Martin. And he knows what it's like to defend someone under the national spotlight and to have a client who becomes fodder for the headlines and hated before they even step into the courtroom. Mark, always good to talk to you. So <laughs> you're the first person I thought of. I mean, this guy is universally despised before he's even mentioned the word presumption of innocence. How do you start this defense? Well, um, you, you will never undo that. Everyone already thinks he's guilty, but all you can really do is try and have the people who are making the decisions, from prosecutors to judges to the potential jury pool, realize that they have to wait, that all of the information that's coming out is wholly incomplete. We really don't know very much yet. And if we make these rush decisions, it's just that like confirmation bias. We look at everything else through what we've already decided. So the best thing that any good defense attorney can do, including Ms. Taylor, is just take her time. Not, I wouldn't even defend actively, he's not guilty, he's not guilty, anything like that. Just believe in the process, have people wait on making their judgment because she is playing to nobody else but her potential jury pool. And that's what is most significant in a case like this. I have so many other questions. I'll start with this one. We got a press release late tonight from the Moscow uh, Police Department saying they're not going to talk to us anymore. And they're not the only ones. There's a gag order in this case. Um, I'm not sure if it was the state or the defense that asked for the gag order, but nobody's allowed to talk. Not prosecutors, not defense attorneys, not investigators. Are you surprised? Um, I'm not, because we are now living in a day and age where there is so much of a flow of information, most of it inaccurate, if not completely wrong, that judges now realize that they have to take control of these type of cases and limit the type of negative publicity, again, that's going to impact on the potential jury pool. So I would not be surprised if this was by the judge him or herself, and I certainly not if it was on behalf of the prosecution who knows that they have to maintain the sanctity of their investigation and eventual prosecution in order to sustain the conviction if they get one. Can't even imagine a judge doing this before it's even in her jurisdiction, but that's pretty fascinating. Okay, so I got 30 seconds left, but tell me this. When does he start getting discovery? When does he start seeing the case that they have against him? 20 or 30 days from now, it'll start flowing. Very little drips and drops to begin with, but much like Florida, they have an obligation to disclose everything that they have, good, bad, and indifferent, so the defense will be prepared. But it's going to happen over the next six or eight or ten months, if not longer, because there's a lot to do and a lot the prosecution is going to do, because they know that they are under a microscope as much as the defense. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.